Good evening. Sorry, some technical problem today. Um, uh, I'm Sarah Chiu. The program is Basket Starfish. I'm presenting my research, you know, uh, for the last 20 something years from an Asian and female perspective. I don't agree that uh, the linguists, you know, uh, talk about our human language as a uh, family trees, different family trees. I believe that it is one single organism, it's like a basket starfish, and that's the name of the program. And by the way, I have all the past episodes, you know, uh, already uploaded in YouTube. You can actually type in YouTube by, uh, with the name and you can try to watch it. Since today I have already lost, you know, uh, more than five minutes of my time. And uh, I hope I can finish it, but today I'm going to continue. But today, uh, I'm still talking about the cross, but instead of looking at it as a tau sign, I also introduce a new way of looking at it as an exo of a circle, okay? Uh, how the ancients come to realize, you know, the importance of this exo, and it actually forms a large part of our uh, human language and our concepts too. And as our technology advances, you know, it actually took on so many different meanings. And without this exo, you know, human civilization is actually not possible. As you will see, I hope I can uh, convey that sense to you through my slides, okay? I'm going to start now uh, with my slide. Okay, um, this is the basket starfish. Okay, this is the basket starfish you see. Oop. Mm, oh. It seems that there is some technical problem again. I don't seem to be able to show it. Um, okay. Uh, sorry, I lost the uh, contact again. For some reason, the computer doesn't match up with the screen. So uh, I don't know how to show you my uh, slides this week. Um, the thing is that uh, please type in the um, program name in the YouTube and I'm going to try my best to explain it, you know, just like that. Uh, I was going to uh, show you this symbol right there. Instead of the cross, you know, I show you in the last week, today is the 65th episode and uh, last week is the 64th. Try to go to the YouTube, look, watch the 64. You will see how I compare uh, the cross like this and then the cross like this and today I'm going to move on to this you know according to the Chinese uh, uh, ancient record you know uh, words actually grow in numbers but as I did my research you know for the last 20 something years you know actually the sound stays actually uh, fairly the same sometimes we change the vowel you know but just like the sound of this tau tau do, do, all this. Uh, we also change the tone and actually as our technology advances, you know, the word and the sound actually acquire more and more meanings. It is meanings that grows, you know. So that's why when I travel around, you know, it is actually in the context. When I go to the desert, when I live with the people, uh, with living with the farmer or living with the fisherman, and I actually acquire how that sound acquires that meaning a lot of the times you know you will find that you know the same sound just by changing a tone actually because you are situated in another area then it actually and in other profession as well it actually required you know and other I mean, acquire another meaning okay uh, so um, the, I was talking about the Tao sign and um, I'm, I I feel bad that I cannot show you you know the computer didn't show up you know my slides this week which I took a long time to prepare it. but uh, as you look at all my past slides you know the bull head is a very important thing you will say that the uh, ancient actually drew, draw two bull heads keep circling around to uh, to show that circular motion but don't forget that other than the two heads there is actually the center the center became more and more important the ancient begin to realize that you know the the unmoved 
movable movers, you know, as the ancient Greek, you know, realized that it is not the moving part outside, it is the unmover, un unmoving mover, I mean, unmovable mover, which is the center, which doesn't seem to be moving, that actually drive everything that's moving. And as time went by, you know, this uh, symbol actually uh, takes on another more abstract and important form. And uh, as time went by, you know, in uh, Proto-Greek, you know, it, it actually acquires the sound of car. And it is very easy for you to understand acquiring because, you know, you can understand as the cardiac because, you know, uh, in ancient Greek, cardiac actually the heart. So it is still pointing to this part where the two lines meet. Of course, you know, because they begin to realize that and they also help a lot of the human invention of course you know you know the cock with the cock they begin to invent all kinds of ma machinery and of course machine is a mutated sound and if you go back to Latin is machina it is still with the K sound okay and of course if you go to Chinese it is actually the kin kin is actually we describe as the uh, male uh, kinetic movement and as, as I said you know the Greek kinesis is the same as the Chinese kin which goes back to this car right there which you can go back to the bull head which is the um, the uh, ancient Egyptian hieroglyph the bull head means car which is a soul and they are talking about not the individual soul they are talking about this cosmic soul which is actually the center of this and that's why they were acquired the sun car right there and of course you know the invention goes on and on you get become the compass and become people begin to navigate of course you know become the wheel you know and actually your word car or cart c-a-r or c-a-r-t also comes from this wheel right there of course from this wheel we begin to measure a lot of things begin uh, begin to become the clock too so just by looking at the car sound from the bull head to the center of this the axle itself to the cardiac to the center of, which is in Greek is kentro and which is also the K so you will see that this symbol is uh, was very very important Okay, so, but if you go back a little bit, you know, the t when when the cross still uh, maintain the Tau's uh, sound and, and sign, just like a cross, still, again, you know, uh, when you see this, is this is circling around, just without the circle around it. So this Tau sign in uh, ancient time, of course, you know, uh, Jesus called himself the Odos, the road, and which in Chinese is the Dou, okay, and which is also give the sound to the Taoism and it is all the ancients believe the ancient way is to follow and exactly in the same way in religion you know you follow the way of a religious leader but in a family you know in a human uh, level you actually follow the way of your forefathers you know so uh, in a way you know all this head sign and also has the sound of Tao in Chinese and then uh, of course you know in, even in Maui, if you are from New Zealand, you will see that how come the sound is so interesting because the Tao sound in Maui, in New Zealand, the aborig aboriginal people will actually say Tao as a prefix, as everything, the reciprocal action, you know. So it is exactly as I keep showing you again and again, the cross with the two bull head on either end keep moving around. So you can actually call the head. Uh, head Tau or you can actually call the exo itself Tau so all these uh, ancient concepts are very mixed together you have to have a very clear head but sometimes you have to actually be very naive as a, ch as a, ch as a child to understand how the sound functions so um, um, the uh, western way uh, of the Eurocentric view of keep chasing everything just back to the Greek and they stop right there 
or the further they go, they keep saying the, the Indo-European. But if you Google it, you know, the European uh, branch is so big, the Indo is so small. And for me, it doesn't make sense, you know, because, you know, the uh, all the linguists are, all, all are the Germanic people. So, of course, they pay a lot of attention in the Germanic way of thinking. So this European, uh, um, Eurocentric view and give you a different lens to look at uh, the language. So I'm trying to present this basket starfish view, uh, trying to show you that we should look at all language as one organism. It's just a center that every single uh, culture is just branched out from this center. So uh, no one is above the other. So I think if we can look at things that way, you know, we can uh, be more equal uh, in, in a way, okay? And I myself, I have um, come across a lot of difficulty because, you know, as you know, uh, you look at me if you're watching this in the CCTV Cambridge or, or if you're watching this in YouTube now, uh, when you see my face, you know, it's nothing or, uh, that, that has authority, right? So uh, when I approach any academic authority, when they look at my face, they don't even want to listen for me for one minute, okay? So that's why I am using this very democratic ground to try to talk to you all out there um, because the academic people are not ready to listen to me because they only listen to white people. I have no other way to change it. And so far I have been uh, struggling with this for more than 20 years and uh, still they think I am uh, the, um, inventing all this but if I can show you all those words all those uh, symbols bring together either they have the same meaning or they carry the same sound I don't think I can make them up myself you know you can now as a such a democratic world you can actually google all those um, um sumerian dictionary you can google the akkadian um, dictionary you can google the chinese dictionary tibetan dictionary greek dictionary you can see for it yourself okay and only if you're willing to to see a little bit of difference but if you are only uh, open your ears to the set academic uh, view then uh, I have no way to to change the way uh, you understand this world you know I travel around for more than 30 years now I have lived among different cultures you know I live up in the mountain I live uh, with the Bedouin. I live with the farmer I live the fish with the fishermen so uh, I actually gather sounds from them I observe how they use uh, all these different tools you know how they come to understand certain things I am of the view that you know uh, we actually share a lot of uh, concepts you know the same way so that's why I look at uh, all those symbols from the very beginning I compare all the pictographs from uh, ancient Sumeria and, and also I compare the pictograph from oracle bones from China and also the Egyptian hieroglyph it's impossible that they all show the same object you know uh, uh, representing the same sound or same consonant or the same syllable so uh, uh, if these are all accident or if these are coincident there has to be a reason too right so um, I truly believe that uh, things like this uh, language itself is very human it is not mathematical as a lot of the German scholar are trying to uh, convince you and uh, because how we think is still a human mind you know nothing is uh, absolutely you know uh, just a number uh, as you can see numbers can numbers can be manipulated very very easily and uh, it depends on how people want to present their view they can actually play with a lot of number to convince you right so uh, I am here to uh, talk to you uh, from a different point of view I remember when I lived in uh, Yemen uh, before I came to America uh, there's something very very interesting uh, when I am not using my brain to analyze you know what they are telling me before I understood uh, any Arabic and I can actually understand a number of imperative uh, when there is no grammar imperative is just an order when they tell you to do something do go walk 
get up something like that when there is no grammar to confuse the sound I can actually understand it at times I actually think ah why are they talking to me in my own uh, dialect Chinese dialect so it is this that uh, actually make me very curious you know then I started to look deeper and deeper into it and then uh, I I truly truly believe that in ancient time before human being uh, spread out you know to different Different continents you know we already have the very basic of our technology developed imagine you know when you go around when you walk around first of all uh, without the, the mortgage without a car without the house to, to bound you down when you be just keep moving around in search of food this is very easy to keep walking I myself when I travel I actually prefer to walk you know I don't normally take a taxi or anything uh, for example example when I, I uh, spend you know um, the time in Tunisia I only ride my bicycle everywhere I didn't take the transportation and when I am in Malta you know I actually walk everywhere I walk for one whole month everywhere with my own feet you know I haven't taken any transportation at all so um, by walking you know you actually get to understand a lot more uh, it's very very different from when you we, when you we ship yourself you know with a taxi from one place to another you understand all the emotion of a human being when you move from one place to another so that's how I get to understand how people uh, use a certain sound to express certain words and and this is my uh, experience and the other thing, you know, since I cannot show you my slides this week, you know, I would like to draw your attention to, uh, you know, open up your ears like a child uh, to hear the sound. It is very, very similar. Just like the sound, uh, exactly this word similar, uh, the singular. So this sin and sink, uh, all the language we tell you that it is from Greek. No, I can tell you uh, it is not that simple because in my name sim is exactly like the way you say similar sim in chinese is only one exactly um i think they uh the sound actually change when you understand zen buddhism this zen is actually uh, uh this uh, mutation of the sound from sim in 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 the eastern language and it is actually to become one with god you know, okay so this sim same uh, and similar they are all one single sound since the ancient time and then interesting enough you know the Chinese word uh, uh, three uh, psalm when you draw three lines is actually carry the sound psalm psalm actually means the same this is the same group whenever you group three together this is a very ancient human custom uh, wherever you go it is always the same uh, from ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs to the Chinese oracle bones they always draw three symbol exactly the same and put together a lot of the times it always have the same sound and 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 of course psalm in Chinese is is, 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 the, is three and three actually means the same as a group okay so um, when you uh, keep going around you will see that you know they also the the gem when you see when you say jamming things together it's, it's jam is actually the mutation from a hard G. So gum and, and jam is actually, you know, also the same root. So um, the thing is that I cannot uh, transcribe to you you know just like in the air just like the ancient uh, they always draw in the sand you know to transcribe some meaning that's why I prefer to uh, give you all those slides so you can also see it visually yourself because a, a lot of the time either you live in the context or you have to see the writings on the sand then you will understand a lot of the sound why it become like that um, so um, as I, I said you say synergy and 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 symphony and 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 psalm sing uh sim wherever i go you know even sanskrit sama is also be become you know the 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 the, the meaning of the same and also sama also sometimes means to gather together so that's why sama actually also means to to, to jam things together so um i have to repeat it again and again because um, 
you need to see the ancient pictograph. The pic pictograph actually shows how the concept of the human mind works, okay? So as time went by, uh, uh, become more and more abstract and become our alphabet. And alphabet, as I said again and again, it is not a simple sign. And alphabet at the beginning were also symbols as well. And uh, a lot of this uh, alphabet actually is written there to mean some kind of movement. So uh, if we look at alphabet, as that symbols then we also uh, lose a lot of its real meaning okay so um, I challenge you you know to look at your own alphabet in a different way again and um, if you are curious about our human development I would uh, really uh, like you to type in the program name basket starfish our language core to look at my past episode so I I have compared a lot of different writing I explained to you why a is leading the alphabet uh, cycle because it was looked at as the unseen energy representation presented by the horn animal. I wouldn't say just the, the bull, the cattle. I would say it also represents the ram as time goes by because it actually coincides with the um, coincide with the uh, development of the co cosmology that the ancient understand. Uh, from the age of Taurus, they move into the age of Aries. So a lot of the thing, words, the writing also is in fashion. So uh, that's why uh, later when the ram, you know, takes on, uh, how come all of a sudden you have all this word about rash and ra and all this become the meaning of the head, you know, the leader. So it is also uh, because you know our human development is going side by side with our, our, our human civilization nothing is stagnant okay so we keep moving on and sometimes things do circle back uh, so um, the again the Euro Eurocentric view of keep presenting to you uh, the view as a straight line like this everything is telling you it's like linear no everything is circular including uh, I have been trying to show you about the sound shifting. I, I, I say that the sound like the B shift to F and the F shift to P, the P shift to B, and it's like a circle. So it really depends on when and where you live. And a lot of the time they exist at the same time, you know. So if you go to China, very simple, different dialect, you will find the same uh, uh, word, but presenting itself as the B and the F and the P and the V just in different region in China at the same time right now okay so nothing is linear and because we are not bound by the alphabet so we are free to you know mutate those sounds so I hope you are uh, you have look at the world with a different